being one of the most tantalizing problems in our engineering. Here's the most important element in the repeater we're using today. If we put a repeater employing one of these elements on a loaded circuit, the result is fairly good, up to a certain distance. Well, if one of them helps, why not use a lot of them? It can't be done. If we use more than one on the circuit, there's distortion and other troubles, too. There's no point in transmitting badly distorted speech, is there? Then Denver is the limit from here. It really is a little bit more than the limit. We are very proud of that circuit. It's all very confusing. You've improved your line, still you need a repeater. Use a couple of repeaters, and right away you hurt your line. I never dreamed it was such a, uh, such a scientific matter. Let me put it briefly. There are three considerations to this problem of getting your remarks in New York over a wire to, uh, well, let us say, San Francisco. First, the best possible amplifying devices. Second, the best possible lines made suitable for those devices. Third, the best possible circuit arrangements for combining the two. Now, I suppose that sounds pretty technical. Yes, don't tell me anymore. I'm mixed up enough already. What I mean is, everything must be engineered to work together. When we get the amplifier we're after, we may have to make adjustments in the loading, or else the amplifier won't operate. The circuit arrangements may have to be changed. We don't know that yet. Every improvement affects everything we've got already. That's telephony. Well, good luck to you. I hope you find what you're after. We expect to do it. It's our job to do it. We have a splendid scientific organization. Some brilliant men have been assigned to this particular problem. We're not going to give up. When you hear that we have a line to the coast, a line that talks, you'll know that America has given something mighty important to the world. It certainly will be important. Well, thank you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Just what was the job they wouldn't give up? It was the same as yours today, to get the message through. But the vital challenge then was to men of science, and the message was to be the first hello across the continent of North America. How that challenge was met, how telephone men from coast to coast teamed up to translate the accomplishment into an agency of service is one of the great chapters of telephone history. The details of the story are legion. They involve the activities of an army led by foresight and faith and inspired by a compelling sense of high purpose in an adventure of exciting significance. To the Western telephone organizations was to come a pioneering building assignment that demanded the utmost in enthusiasm in skill and devotion. In the record is the name of every man who helped in that construction task. Every surveyor, teamster, cook, lineman, ground man, foreman, superintendent, engineer. And the men of the long lines at headquarters and along their circuits all the way to the Rockies had coordinating responsibilities of the most exacting character that call for equal devotion and skill. It was an army that moved. It was an army that achieved of its activities on a wide and changing front, there can be but the merest hint in this anniversary tribute. Build that line to California. We'll make it work. We must develop another type of repeater. New York wants a report on our lines west of Denver. New York's talking about a phantom group clear across the country. Mercury arc repeater still seems too erratic. Let's see what the labs can do with this vacuum tube. We'll meet the Pacific men at the Nevada line. There's got to be a better vacuum. Start out the surveyors. Put transcontinental estimates in the budget. <laughs> up the mathematical research. We build and repair to Salt Lake, then 130 miles west, all new. Present construction to the Reno area, then 400 miles east, all new. Set up 3,500 miles of artificial line for testing.
sure divisions one, four, and five are ready. 500 men can do it. Let's get organized. We'll use 14,000 poles crossing Nevada. This new tube design might work with better lines. Remeasure loading and transposing. New York to Denver. It must be accurate. <laughs> says 23,000 transpositions, including phantoms. The temperature, still 130. Look out for rattlesnakes. Some job, this loading every eight miles across the country. Repeaters ready for the first test? All ready. Three current. More than 30,000 of today's telephone forces were in Bell System service on that January day of 1915 when greetings between East and West span 3,400 miles in dedication ceremonies. To these thousands, the developments of succeeding years must indeed make a story of vivid reminiscence. On that day, there was a single overland route, a so-called phantom group of three circuits only, a voice highway hailed as a miracle. And now, there are four great modern communication arteries crossing the plains and scaling the western mountains, each with a multitude of channels along which may flow the words that bind together all sections of our country. The historic amplifiers of the first transcontinental test are treasured as ancestors of nearly a half million that today give their restoring impulses to the currents coursing through them at a thousand strategic centers. A frequency range of but 900 cycles represented the first speech that united East and West. Today, there is three times that pioneer range to bring about the clarity that distinguishes nationwide transmission. And three times three does not tell the extent to which special circuits, 50,000 miles of them, can bring to radio stations the overtones of symphony and song. Storm-proof cables now span distances of unbelievable magnitude to the engineers of that first transcontinental highway. Direct circuits to faraway cities radiate from busy centers that switching may be minimized and the time gap shortened between your call, please, and ready with Atlanta. Antennas dot the coasts 
to take from the wires the voice of America and herd it to the telephones of six continents and to ships at sea, while others lift their alert and sensitive wires to catch the waves that hold the answering words. Truly today, Earth has no limit to human speech because of science and because of the men and women who guard and guide what science has revealed. Someone will find out how to use it better. Something tells me. Something tells me.